Next, we have Michael. Michael, while you're coming up here, think of a question. Um, what? Yeah, easy question. Uh, what is your least favorite design pattern? <laughs> CQRS. <laughs> no. Wow. It's good. Uh, All right. So, hi, I'm Michael Reiters Pearson, and I'm here to talk about. Get ready. I'm not here yet. All right. <laughs> now you're here. Ready? Go. I'm still Michael Reiners Pearson, and I'm here to talk about my favorite design pattern, CQRS. CQRS uh, is a, a useful pattern in distributed applications, especially if you're using event sourcing or you need to query complex data across multiple data sources. CQRS means command and query responsibility segregation, which just means dividing the responsibility of updates, that's the uh, command side, uh, with the, the read side, which is your query side. Uh, routing can be handled through an API gateway or ingress in Kubernetes, and your clients can be completely unaware that all of this is happening in the back end, which is great. The magical part to me, though, is the part right in the middle labeled events. It represents a, an approach to keeping the query side up to date with data from the command side. And wrapped in here is a lot of complexity. But if you take a little bit of time to plan ahead, you can build a robust and reliable system. So let's talk about some of the challenges you might face uh, implementing uh, CQRS and maybe some solutions that could help with that. A common approach to guaranteeing that the query side stays up to date with data changes in the command side is by using uh, uh, asynchronous events routed through a message queue. Basically, the command, when it updates data, also puts a message on the queue. This should be done transactionally so that the operations succeed or fail together. Um, the query side reads from the queue and updates itself. The message should be pretty small and maybe contain a reference ID that the query can use to uh, uh, get the full entity information to populate. There will be problems. Sometimes messages come out of order or they can be delivered twice. One thing you can do on the query side is to implement idempotent processing, which means processing a message multiple times uh, results in the same uh, outcomes. To support complex queries, uh, the query side data is often denormalized or aggregated, uh, often from multiple sources. You can think of this as a projection of the entity data. Uh, including version numbers in your messages can also help a lot. That way the query side can decide if it's already consistent or if it needs to be updated. And uh, in which case, um, if it's consistent, it can just simply ignore the message. Uh, name your messages as past tense verbs and your cues as imperative commands. That way you end up with something that reads like a sentence. The form changed message is routed to the update form projection queue. So these are not atomic operations, which means that the command side data is not immediately available on the query side. Uh, you can handle this eventual consistency, but user communities need to be um, willing to work with a system that is not always completely consistent. Uh, here are some approaches to helping with that. The command side can issue unique IDs to help with tracking as part of its synchronous processing. The client side can treat updates as, as um, pending until it can reconcile the changes. You can include a callback to the command service that gets invoked by the query service when it's done updating, or you can implement something like SignalR or other WebSocket web technologies to update the client side with updates. Not only that, but the query side can issue its own events. So the form change event goes to the update form projection queue, and then the query service emits a projection updated event, which is routed to a notify users queue. Too much coffee. So uh, one thing to note is the query side can, can go down. And what happens is the messages stack up in the queue, which is really exactly what you want. When it comes back online, it can pick up the changes and, and pick up right where it left off. Uh, you may need to include uh, background update methods, especially if you are running in a managed cluster environment or as part of a deployment pipeline, because the query service can restart unexpectedly. You can store the status right in the query service itself. Uh, the query service can also have projections from multiple sources, which means it may end up being uh, uh, one of the larger uh, data stores in your system. So if it takes a long time to repopulate, 
uh, consider including it in your disaster recovery planning. Uh, developing this kind of architecture can be a little bit of, of a challenge, but you can use containers running locally with RabbitMQ or service, excuse me, cloud-based queries. Uh, just remember to isolate one developer's messages from another developer's. So CQRS adds a lot of complexity to your architecture, but it also allows for flexible and adaptable system behaviors, scalability, and built-in robustness. Check it out. It might just be the thing you need. Thanks. Great job.